Hey guys, welcome to my new channel, The Aspie Girl. Because I am a Aspie Girl. I know it's not technically an autism term anymore, and we all go by autism, but I am still high functioning and I like to differentiate that, if that's the right word. And... Gosh, I don't know how vloggers hold their cameras up like this. It hurts. Especially for someone with shoulder issues. Probably not smart. Maybe I should put this on a tripod. <laughs> what an intro. What an intro. That shows you I just get off topic sometimes. <laughs> okay, let's just get the... <laughs> there, I'll rest it on my leg. Yes, that is music in the background. I listen to music on my iPad all day because it really helps me stay calm and happy. So, this is all very random, and I'm sure you're wondering, what is this leading to? Well, one of the first topics I wanted to cover was aut high-functioning autism and communication. Because even though, like, we are verbal, we still struggle with it a lot. I've had such bad experiences, I'm physically and emotionally scared. You can't be physically scared to socialize. Wow. I am emotionally scarred, as we called it, from being bullied so much. And when I say we, I mean my mom and I. But I've just been scarred so many times emotionally that it's hard to put yourself out there and to make new friends because there are so many mean people out there who won't accept me with everything that I am. But then I have met a lot of wonderful people on my journey who do accept me for who I am. But I've moved around so I'm not with those people anymore and it's hard to start over. And in three years, I'll be doing it all over again, even though I've made some friends here. I'll be starting all over in Montana, but Montana has a different effect on me for some reason. Like, it makes my life a lot easier being in a small town, and just the people are really kind and just different there, and it's really beautiful. And it has a bunch of stuff that, like, just beautiful stuff, like trees. And it's not just city. It has so much life to it. I've always wanted to move there. It has so much life to it, and there's so many things you can actually do for free, like going to the park, like, well, that's not free, but... You can get a one-year pass. But you can go hiking, you can go to the park, you can go to all these local events. There's just so much variety. And I'm hoping I can meet my true friend eventually there. I mean, I have true friends, but I've always wanted like a BFF. And I've never been able to find that someone my age who accepts me for who I am. All disabilities and all, autism and all, Tourette's and all, OCD and all. Yes, I have other ones too. But I just wish people saw that we're just like everyone else. We have feelings. And all that st 
stuff. We have feelings. We're not like idiots. We know when you're being rude to us. And even though sometimes we do misinterpret, so what? Just tell us in a nicer, calmer manner. Manner. Nicer, calmer manner. <laughs> that, that, you know, we misunderstood and that's not what you meant. And then maybe explain to us what you meant instead of being like, so offended by it because, again, that's part of our disability. But also, I've encountered friends that tell me I misunderstand something when I totally am not misunderstanding it. They use it against me, too. And they aren't my friends anymore, obviously, because I know what I'm talking about. I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm talking about, and... The fact that people like to play that against me, that I don't, is hurtful. Because I know what I'm talking about. I've gone through years and years of therapies and social groups and stuff to be where I am today. Posting to this YouTube channel and everything. And to be as brave as I am and as strong as I am. And to be as talkative and social as I am, it took a lot of work. So I am much better at determining social situations now. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, please. Unless, like I genuinely, unless you're like genuine about it. And I, but genuine is one case, okay, like. If I genuinely misunderstood, I would tell you. But if I really did know what was going on, I wouldn't just be, like, faking it. I knew what was going on in this one event. And people just tried to turn it around on me and say that it was me. And <laughs> that's not true. It's not me. It was them. They didn't care for me being different. Or any of that stuff. And they were really rude to me. And I didn't misread that. I didn't misread what came out of that lady's mouth. I'm not... Again, I'm not dumb. So I, I can understand what people say. And how people are saying it. And how people are treating me. That's a point I wanted to get across, is that we do understand. Even people with autism who are nonverbal do understand. We're, we all understand. And it hurts when people think we don't. I think everyone on the spectrum to a degree can understand more than we're given credit for. Whether you're nonverbal, verbal, partially verbal, very verbal, I don't know. I just think we need, we all need to be given a, given a lot more credit than we are. <laughs> well, I hope that helps. I know it was kind of random at the beginning, but autism communication and neurotypical communication can clash, and I understand that, but it also can be a great thing. We don't have to treat it like we have some sort of germ. And nobody wants anything to do with it. We are people just like everyone else. And we would probably make a great friend if you, if you tried. I know, I know I still want friends. And hopefully one day I get there. I know I will. 
I'm just finally at a place where I can have friends and do that kind of thing. And I'm 22, and that's okay. Took me longer to get there. But now that I am, I'd like people to watch this and realize what things hurt and how autism works and that kind of stuff. I hope this helped someone out there and this Aspie girl, the Aspie girl is out.